Welcome everyone to our fifth energy exchange here. Before we dive into our uh, exchange itself, please keep in mind some of the points here, which is that we encourage your interaction in the Q&A, which we we'll aim to address at the end of uh, the speaker's remarks. And please keep in mind also that this uh, event will be recorded. So if you choose to keep your camera off, uh, that's, that's fine by us. So yes, welcome to our penultimate uh, energy exchange, the fifth, fifth session out of six for our first season so far. Um, for those of you who may not be aware of uh, ICLE and what it does, it is a network of over 2,500 local and regional governments committed to sustainable urban development. Our work tends to cut across these five pathways that you can see here, including low emissions, nature-based development, equitable, resilient, and circular development. As you can imagine, a topic such as energy is cuts across all of these uh, sectors. And we find that is true in one of our flagship work streams, which is the 100% renewable cities and regions um, concept. Here, we tend to focus on 100% renewable energy as a whole and not limited to the electricity sector. So we try and address uh, heating and cooling as well as transport in addition to electricity powered by renewable energy sources. So the way this uh, is realized in our work is through uh, three initiatives. So we have the 100% Renewables Roadmap Project, and we also have a number of networking cities through the 100% RE Network and the Energy Compact. As you can see, these cities are spread across the globe, and we work quite closely with some of them, especially on local strategy development, where we help with the policy recommendations as well as governance processes, and then finally the implementation of bankable renewable energy or energy efficiency projects. As you can see, this is the uh, depth of the support offer we provide our cities, especially the ones that we work closely with, starting with uh, data collection in the beginning, followed by uh, feasibility assessments, energy systems modeling, which then feed into a a robust local strategy, and then we assist in implementation as well, including by uh, developing bankable projects and, and so on. Uh, this led us to identify a gap in our work, which was the, the constant renewal of, of knowledge and trying to expose our, our partners to new ideas and experts in the field who are experienced, who've seen how things unfold on the ground. And that's why we developed this idea of uh, energy exchanges. Which was to build in mind, uh, which was to bridge this local planning efforts in mind uh, with implementation mechanisms. So uh, for now, we start off with a series of virtual exchanges, and in each exchange, we uh, dive deep into various solutions for the local sustainable energy transition. And as you can see from the participant list, many people from local governments as well as practitioners and experts in the domain. We hope that you can benefit from this. Which brings us to today's topic, which is quite important, and that is the future of energy efficient buildings. I'm sure I don't have to emphasize that energy efficiency is a key step in our uh, action against the climate emergency and is often referred to as the first fuel. And this is especially important for the building sector, which already accounts for around 30% of global final energy consumption. Today, we'll be focusing on how digitalization measures can be helped can be used to, to increase energy efficiency in this sector. And we have the honor of welcoming Manson Millier from the Schneider Electric Sustainability Research Institute, who will be our featured speaker today. Uh, Manson is the Vice President of the Energy Transition Research at Schneider Electric Sustainable Research Institute. And as an energy expert, he's been involved in a number of international organizations, think tanks, and industry associations. He spent over 25 years with Schneider Electric and in various positions at both operational and global levels. And most recently, he was a fellow of the Materials, Energy and Infrastructure Platform at the World Economic Forum, where he helped shape the Net Zero Carbon City Initiative. He holds both a Doctor of Science and a PhD in Optoelectronics and an engineering degree in physics. And we are very glad to have him here. And with that, off to you, Matsu. Hello, thank you very much. You can see me now, okay. Um, I will share my screen quickly. 
very happy to be with you today and to explain a bit uh, 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 what we what we what we do at Schneider Electric for the decarbonization and digitization of buildings and uh, a, a description of what can be done in buildings and cities. So I will share I will share my screen. You should see. You should see my presentation in full screen. Let yep. me know, Kanak, if All it's good. okay. Very good. Yes, um, so he, here is the, the building I'm presenting from. I'm based in Grenoble, in, in southeast of France, and uh, this is a net zero building on a on a yearly basis, and uh, there is a very low energy consumption. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is several things. Uh, I have about 40 minutes and uh, we will have time for questions behind. Uh, what is a building in the context of decarbonization and digitization? Uh, we speak a lot about art to abate sectors, but what, uh, what about buildings and cities? It's not so easy to, have to, to, to abate. In fact, uh, I will explain. What does mean net zero commitment and where is where is the issue? It's uh, obviously on operationalization. Uh, we speak about digital and sustainability. What does that mean? And uh, try to put facts behind this uh, virtual data, uh, which is not always easy to, un to, to be understood by, by policymakers. Um, and then I will come to some factual results from a research point of view and, and, uh, and, this, and use case in different geographies. Okay, building is, a, is, is an easy to abide sector, but there is a but. Um, in fact, uh, it's not it's a, it's an easy to abide it's an easy to abide sector. In fact, from the technology standpoint, there are many technologies which are available today. Uh, there are business models that helps deploying this technology with a, when there is a cost issue. But really, the, the, the what what needs to be onboarded and embarked into this transition is the overall value chain. Uh, here you find the five key, key, key stakeholders of the value chain, the investors, the real estate players that are investing and, and, and developing, the, 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 the value chain of design and build and construction, and I should say deconstruction, okay, uh, and installers. Uh, the technology players, we Schneider Electric are a technology provider. We provide energy management solution uh, from uh, energy pro electricity protection, power conversion, uh, uh, and a lot of things, but we are a tech provider, like uh, we are not selling uh, heat pump or rooftop solar, but we, we do everything in between. And we are a global company. Uh, and five, obviously, uh, the, the, the occupants, which are either owner or tenants or facility managers. So when you look at this complexity, investing is not so easy. And when, when, when I speak about uh, uh, owner or occupants for cities, you, there are two types of buildings. The public buildings, you can act directly. And the, the non-public building or the private building where, in fact, you have some power. And I will speak about that at the end of my, of my, of my presentation. In fact, uh, saying that you have more, more power than you think to decarbonize your city. Here, yeah, just a, 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 a snapshot about what does it mean, who, what, what, what uh, we'd say, what are the triggers of investment? And, and depending on the type of building, depending on who you are in the value chain, and cities and myers and cities are one a stakeholder of the value chain, you will, you will have different ways or different ways of thinking about the value you want to have from your investment. So here, if I speak about the owner, which can be a, a public body, uh, it's, a, it's a obviously about complying to regulation, but if I, typically for a city, it's, it's very important to think about redu reduction of, of OPEX. But it's also important to think about the building as a lively place and to think about corporate social responsibility, how a building integrates into the city. Uh, it can be about decar uh, decarbonized building, but it's also about managing water. It's also about uh, green roof and biodiversity, for example. And the question is quite complex for when, when talking about, for example, about rooftops, uh, because you, you have the competition for roofs between biodiversity, uh, white paintings, uh, rooftop, and so on and so on. I'll stop here, but just to show you the complexity. From a, from a 
where we are today globally on the on the buildings and cities, I think what I want to show here is, is on vertically is a, whether you are just a building owner or you are, a, you are you are mayor of the city or your country. And on the right is how to how to de, how to to achieve our goals. There is a topic of commitment, execution, and verification. What you find today on the market, you have a lot of commitments from many cities all over the world. I think this is not the, this is not I would say the problem. I mean there are more and more cities committing, and it's very good. Uh, on the right, you have ways of. Uh, verifying, measuring, you have labels. If it's non, if it's non-regulatory, you have labels that can show what you are doing. Uh, so it's not a either, I would say, a problem. You can, there are more than eighty labels globally in, in on the world around buildings and and districts now. The difficult part is the middle one. The difficult part is the middle one because uh, you need to have finance and green finance. You you need to. To, to your investment and to convince your investors, you need to make the right choice, the right choices. In fact, when you decarbonize a building, it's a, it's a long journey. You can usually, if you want to decarbonize an existing building, you, it's difficult to do everything at a time. It's difficult to change when it's a residential or non-residential, commercial. It's difficult to change at the same time the gas boiler, uh, to put a BMS, to put rooftop solar, if you want to have a full decarbonization and um, a future-proof building. So one of the things you can do uh, at the beginning is obviously understand your building and your cities, and it goes through notably what we call digitization, which encompass many things I will, I will go, I will detail. So from, from a <clears throat> to help on acting, there are, there, are, there, are, there are several, uh, I would say, framework or recipes that were built recently. One from the World Green Building Council, which is called Beyond the Business Case. One from the World Economic Forum, which through the Net Zero Carbon City uh, project. And they, they developed a building value framework which shows how digital and low carbon investment are bringing value for decarbonization, but not only. I will explain later on. And from that, we at Schneider, we proposed an operational ebook, which is available and freely available, freely available to any stakeholder of the buildings who wants to pray to have future proof building. So just a point about digital. <clears throat> I want to explain what, what, what is digital. In fact, digital is about many things, it's about connecting assets, connecting products, connecting systems. It's about data aggregation and analytics to make to, to go from data to information. It's about measuring, monitoring, and controlling. And when I say controlling, it's about a management system which act concretely in switching on. Uh, uh, for example, it's how to manage the self consumption from a PV to solar, for example, from a PV to a battery, for example. You need digital to manage that. Uh, another example, and I will take this example to show you the links between the boxes, is a building management system in, in an office or in a, in, in a hotel or in a, in a hospital. In fact, the building management system, which was historically designed to maintain a temperature in, in a building, is, is now, <clears throat> uh, has, now be, has now evolved to a more complex system, which allows you to measure the temperature and the light in different parts of your, of your building. So it contributes to user satisfaction, as it is written here, like well-being and so productivity. It's about health because your building management system can manage the flux, the flow of air, uh, air quality. It's about air quality. It's about decarbonization because if you do, if you do not eat or light a room, a meeting room where there is nobody, you, you are doing savings. And with BMS, when you deploy a BMS into a building, uh, let's say a 10 year old building from today, you save between 20 and 30% easily. It's just a question of deployment of point of information and controls of, of your building. Now you can have a broader value. In fact, uh, when you look at a BMS, for example, uh, you can decide to pre eat the building during the night when you have, for example, during the day, a peak on your grid. So this is what, what we call augmented building. You bring 
more value than just the value for the owner of the building. And when doing that, you can you can get in some countries some uh, uh, compensation for this act. Like in the UK, you can be compensated for load shedding. Okay, so very, very interesting. Uh, last point about this, the value, in fact, uh, when you look at electrical vehicles, in fact, you, we speak a lot about public charging, but from a, a, a practical and user, user use cases uh, aspect, be, cars are mostly in buildings, at home, at work, at the mall, et cetera, et cetera. And when they, when they are at home or at work, they are what we call behind them, the meter, they are on private or semi-private um, assets. And in fact, most of the building will, will reach, most of the, the vehicle will recharge in the building. So you can do smart charging in your buildings by, by charging sequentially your cars, but you can also play with your solar. If you can use your solar at the same time as your EVs are there, it's interesting at work. If it's not the case, you can, you can store uh, solar into a battery and recharge your, your car at night. Or you can have smart charge, smart tariff, which helps you to, to choose the right time of charging at home. So you see, so, so the future of decarbon the decarbonization future goes with digital. Okay. I stop here. So at Schneider, we developed a recipe which uh, we, we, through, and we have a detailed ebook which explains what you should look at if you have a portfolio of, of building in a city. You could just apply this nine questions, okay, do you have gas boilers? Uh, do you have rooftop? Yes, no. Do you have a BMS? Yes, no. Are you monitoring the energy beyond your smart meter in your buildings? Are you, do you have more sensors than just one meter, which allows you to manage your buildings? So these are simple set questions you, could, you, you can have for a, for a kind of poll on all your, your, your portfolio of assets. So the first part is really about decarbonizing. It's about electrifying. It's about removing, basically removing fossil fuel. It's about energy efficiency. It can be passive for insulation, but it can be also active with BMS or, or in, in homes, it's called uh, home controls. Everyone knows about home controls. It's about putting rooftop solar and eventually batteries. And the, the case for batteries depends on the type of buildings. We are doing some research on that. The digitization part is really about measuring. It's about ensuring that all your assets are connected so that we can pull up the, the, the information and optimize the system. And it's about uh, verifying we can link, for example, the, the, the measurements which are done in the, in the building with, uh, with, uh, with labels. For example, with a lead label, we can do a dynamic refresh of the lead certification, for example, which is very interesting because you avoid to have repetitive cost of certification. Uh, one point is a point seven, it's about building information modeling, which is about having digital twins of your building. It's more for, you may think it's only for construction, but it's also very useful in maintaining your buildings because you link your building information modeling to your um, management, your facility management system. So you can detect, for example, where do you have a default product, for example, a variable speed drive behind the motor for, of a ventilation. So it has a lot of value. And the last part we, part, we call it augment, is what I said. It's not about the building, it's also beyond the building. So you can design a building which can provide services to the grid, to the system operators. To, to pull up electrons for stability of the system or grid congestion in distribution, in distribution networks. The other thing is that you can also, uh, for example, recover the heat and send the heat into the district network, district heating network. And of course, you can uh, manage your electrical vehicle. Uh, and I think this is a very important piece because uh, the, uh, the, the speed at which electrical vehicles now are deploying in many countries, at least in a, even in China, I think in China it's even the most impressive. You have to think that today, for example, in the headquarters in Paris, Schneider has 50, 50 chargers, 1,000 people building, 50 chargers, 200 cars can come today, every day. So you have to manage to build uh, building policies and building codes 
which take into account the future proof of this building with respect to the implementation of EV cars. I will come back on that. Just looking at the time. Obviously, you can select each of these these uh, these uh, these uh, these lines of the of the recipe, but uh, there is more value in bundling. Obviously, if you can manage, at, you can deploy solar and you can deploy a battery. But if you make if you make them speak and work together, it's, it brings more value. Okay, what we did at Schneider Electric, we created two years ago uh, uh, a think tank. Uh, you know, in 2020, sorry, so it's a bit more now, three years, a think tank which whose the objective is to build econometric studies which explain what are the benefits of digitization and decarbonization in the different sectors. We build also long-term scenario based on innovations, behaviors of people and rebound effects. So we started from the base and we made a bottom-up analysis of the, um, of the, um, of the world somehow from now to 2050. And in fact, what we find, and it's not new, if you look at the IEA reports, for example, it's about the same. You have three pillars of decarbonization, obviously decarbonize the supply and mostly uh, mostly electricity, but not only. It can be also uh, deploy hydrogen in some sectors. It's about boosting energy efficiency and circularity. And it's about accelerating electrification in the different sectors. It can be about electrical vehicles. It can be about eating in buildings and homes. It can be about heat, industrial heat in uh, industry, for example. So with the, the objective of this, of this slide, just to show you that we, we wrote a number of papers in green, the green boxes around the building, looking at heat pump, looking at... Uh, uh, new buildings and, uh, and existing buildings, looking at energy efficiency for BMS, looking at smart charging, looking at rooftop solar. And the red one, bottom right, is the aggregation of all this technology, which allows you to, if I were to go to a bo to bowling, it's a strike. I mean, you, you, you really, uh, at the end of your journey, you should be in the red state. You, you have de deployed decarbonization for heat and cooling or cooling and extensive uh, energy efficiency. So what we, we published last year is a, is a report showing that we, you can divide your emission by two or three. You can divide your energy spend by two or three by reducing your also your energy demand by, by minus 30 to minus 50%. So you see in the in the drawing on the right the different assets. So it's a, it's what we call a future proof building. We did this study mostly for uh, countries having uh, heating systems. So we are right now uh, working on a new study incorporating a number of countries like China or India having cooling cooling aspects but no heating aspects. I will not go into the detail, but this is just to show you that we, we took uh, many geographies, we took uh, many types of buildings, and we, we have the ranges of the benefits in terms of energy cost, in terms of payback, in terms of uh, weather for new buildings or existing buildings. So I will let you read that quietly with the presentation later on. But I think the value is to show you a few examples of what, what, of what is possible today. Uh, I will show you three buildings, uh, two old buildings which have been uh, renovated, one uh, in Paris, so cold climate, and one in Kalong in Singapore, hot climate, and a new building in a cold country intensity, the building you saw the picture on the first slide. So the Hive is, is, a, is, a, is an office building in Paris, uh, with uh, about 2,000 residents, and it got delivered in, in 08. Uh, but we entered, uh, we entered in this building a bit after, and we decided to deploy a number of technologies. Okay, uh, These technologies, it was not only for reducing the cost of energy or carbon, carbon emission, it was also to ensuring the best comfort to the, to the, to the users. Okay, so this building has been certified BRIAM, LEED, and as a LEED Platinum, for example. So I, I, I 
put this slide just to make you afraid, <laughs> but you should not be. Uh, in fact, it just shows here that if you want to digitize your building, you need to have information. So you need to have information through sensors, through products which are not just dumb products, but uh, connected products. Uh, you need what we call edge control at Schneider Electric about everything, real-time control. And you need, you need all the, I would say, non-real-time for, for analytics uh, at the top. And here, for example, one example, which is quite obvious today, you, you deploy a lot of heat pumps today in Europe. Most of the market is deployment of heat pumps, which are not connected, which are not controllable. Or we know that a heat pump is increasing Significant, significantly the level of uh, electri electricity in a building, in a home. So it's better if you can manage it, if you want to, to adjust it with your, uh, if you want to do some load shading, if there is an issue in your network. So here, uh, just to show you the results of our experiments, what do we do? What, what did we do? Uh, we deployed the BMS. Okay, we divided by you. You see on the left vertically the final energy, final energy uh, in kilowatt hour per square meter per year. So it's a, it was about two hundred. So um, not such a bad result because it's quite a new building. The average for Europe is two hundred fifty kilowatt hour per square meter per year. Um, and here you see we deployed building management systems, then we deployed renewable. And we we came to 70, 75, so we divided by IL through energy efficiency, and then we deployed rooftop solar, we deployed geothermal, and we are now in twenty twenty we were not, we were in twenty twenty two at forty four zero kilowatt hour per square meter per year. Just a comment on that: we had the. Uh, you know the the Ukraine war and the impact on the on the price of energy. And we were able to reduce by 10, 15 more percent the energy consumption through uh, uh, sufficiency, behaviors of people. Okay. Now, when we speak about the level of investments and uh, savings and payback, uh, you see this, uh, this chart, which has been built, which had been uh, uh, built pre crisis pre-crisis, so it was before COVID, okay? And before the increase in price of electricity. When you look at the right, so in green, the, the payback have been readjusted with the value of, uh, of the electricity, electricity and gas prices, you see, and here it's mostly about electricity, uh, electricity, by the way, uh, you see that the payback can be significantly, uh, sig significantly low uh, from one year to uh, two point five years for energy efficiency, and for photovoltaic and photo and geothermal about less than ten years, which are big investment when you think about the size of the roof and when you think about the geothermal. So the average payback is eight point five eight eight years, which is perfectly acceptable today, given the financing you can get. Here, just uh, the, the, the mimicking of the energy efficiency and renewable deployment in carbon emission. And today, uh, we are at 73 CO2, CO, CO, kilo, kilo CO2, uh, CO2 ton equivalent. Uh, we we, we, in, we uh, added elect electrical vehicle charging infrastructure, as I said earlier, because I was speaking about this building. And we did some grid management and demand response uh, in 2022, uh, following the, the, the Ukraine crisis, and we were able to, to load shed a number of loads in this building. I will give you some example here. So it was on April 3rd and 4th, 2022. You see here the, 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 the load curve of the heating system. You see here the pre-eating in a, in a Sunday evening, and here you see the, the no eating. When the DSO did ask us not to, to use electricity, we were able to load shed 30, almost 40, 400 kilowatt for three hours. Just an, just an example. 
So here, just an example of a smart charging solution. My point here, my comment would be that um, we have some rules. When you have a lot of cars in a building, in, a, in an office building, you define rules. And here, the, the priority people who are, who are having priority were visitors and salespeople while people working on site were not, were not having a priority. So you need to define a rule. And uh, uh, each car is not charged at its full maximum. So you, need a, you define a, a time at which you want to leave and the level of, uh, of charging you want. And uh, it is somehow optimized. Uh, it's not somehow, but uh, optimized according to a number of rules. And um, and it, it's working well. This thanks to smart charging, an important an important point. We were not uh, we, were, we we didn't need to upgrade our electrical distribution on site. So no more cost for the electrical distribution infrastructure. No more low voltage, medium voltage transformer with the the utility, the, the local utility no investment into new copper line. So you transfer the, this is what, this is what I could use a naming which is used in the US, it's called non-wire alternative. Instead of investing into the grid, you have other assets which allow you not to invest into the grid. So very interesting use case and, uh, and the message here, I mean, it's going to, to accelerate very strongly and we have to pay attention that a number of buildings will not be able to cope with a number of EVs if we do not deploy this type, this type of system. Geothermal, just to explain you, uh, to explain you the, the system, uh, we are taking water from the, from the ground. Uh, it's very classical, but it's an industrial water, water heat pump. And you do the annual savings on the, uh, in, on, in red and uh, the investment in green. Um, it got invested in, in 20, 2015. I move to a second one. Intensity, new building, southeast of France, a lot of sun. You see the, the rooftop, the, the panels on the roof. Uh, this building is, has been completed in 2020. And what is interesting is that it's a zero, it's a zero carbon building, okay. And uh, from an energy standpoint, we were as low, we are as low as thirty seven kilowatt per meter per, per year per square meter, which is very very low. So you have a good envelope, and we have a fully equipped the the, the 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 building with with a with a low carbon technologies and digital. For example, we have a reversible heat pump. We have a, not a reversible heat pump. We generate cold and heat at the same time. So we have a dual, a dual heat industrial heat pump. Uh, we, store, we store energy in a, in a battery. We store energy in water if we want on-site to allow flexibility, demand-side flexibility to optimize our, our energy. Uh, sometimes we use rooftop solar and the electricity of the rooftop solar to eat the water. So in fact, we don't, we don't take the, the energy from the grid. And even if low carbon in France with nuclear, it's a, it's a, very, it's a zero carbon electricity. Um, here is just to show you that we made the analysis on a full life cycle analysis. When you look at full life cycle, this is the, the, the table uh, at the bottom right. You look at several phases from A1 to B7, and at each each stage, in fact, you have carbon emission. Okay, uh, products construct the product the, the construction products. You know the cement, the steel, the construction phase. So you have uh, all the works, the usage, and the end of life. Uh, obviously, when you when you recover. So you see here. That uh, you have most of the emissions at construction at uh, from from the from the products at construction, and uh, and another big piece at, at another big piece at use. But it's for this building, it's still very very low. I move to Kalang. It's a it's a it's a high rise in 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 Singapore. In this case, no obviously no no eating, but uh, need for a good cooling equipment. 
uh, strong digitization with building management system, uh, management of tiles for 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 avoiding to have too much too much sun in inside. So uh, highly controlled buildings with more than three thousand connected points, and we were able to uh, to to reduce the carbon footprint. I have some figures here. This is again the decarbonization journey. This is energy reduction all along the along the years from 20, uh, 2017 to uh, to twenty twenty one. So you see, uh, the first one is, uh, is 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 just an optimization of the of the of the workspace by moving from four buildings to one building. So we could not we could decide not to account for it. But you have step two passive energy reduction. You know with uh, all the smart products I mentioned. Step three is about renewable energy and active energy. Step four active energy management, what we call an advanced BMS which is able to optimize at uh, what we call a, a cell, you know, a kind of, you, know, you take six or seven build, uh, six or seven desks that are managed together, in fact. We have a microgrid, which manages uh, the link between the PV, the battery and everything. And uh, what is not produced on site, there is, there is a, a purchase, of uh, renewable electricity, like a PPA, what we say, PPA, power purchase agreement, okay. So 46% energy reduction, quite an impressive building. So it, it really works in, uh, in, in, in hot countries. I'd like to finish by this slide. I think I'm not too long. I hope it's okay. Um, uh, the question is about okay, uh, okay. We spoke a lot about technology. We spoke a lot about technology. We say okay, we know what to deploy. We know that it cannot. It, it will probably be, be not done at one at once. So we have a carbon. We have a, an idea of the, the decarbonization per technology, and we can build a roadmap. Now you have how to make it happen. And here is our, our free. Uh, we'd say fields where it accelerates the deployment. First is local policies. You start to see a number of, of policies in, uh, in cities. I mentioned here two policies, uh, one in New York. You may have heard about this policy, which, which, uh, which, uh, is, which is a system of what I call cap on fine. Basically, the city of New York is saying to uh building owners or occupants uh you are allowed to 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 emit a number of co2 per square meter and they do the analysis per type of building uh per and they do the the analysis if you have gas or if you have electricity so on one side they are they, so they, 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 they explain you they give you the way to measure your 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 your, your, your carbon emission on the other side, they say, now you, you, you know your, your CO2 emission, now you will have a roadmap of cap, of capping of emission, which means that you need to define a roadmap of decarbonization. And what I found interesting is that they, they mentioned they, they, in front of that, they provide subsidies for rooftop solar, they provide subsidies for heat pumps. And one last aspect I would like to point out is that they paid attention to the low in, to the low income people, and low income people were not under this obligation. I mean, social housing was not under this obligation. You may say it's partly satisfactory because you do not you do not renovate social housing, but at least it's it's a protection of the of the of the low income people. So this is a system using tax. The second system is the second second graph is is a bit older. It's uh, the the Tokyo metropolitan area area, where they 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 designed they created a, a, a carbon emission trading system, an ETS energy trading system market. Like in the EU, you have the ETS market for industries and and producer of energy. Here they designed a carbon market for uh, building owner, uh, commercial and industrial buildings. Okay, so they define this market and they cap, and each year they cap. 
And in front, again, in front of that, they have a cap and trade program, but on the market. And they, they us, I mean, jointly to this market, they provide a number of tools that help consumer uh, operationalize the, the decarbonization. Second is the innovation contest. Uh, I take two examples, and I was very interested by the, the Helsinki challenge. Helsinki launched um, a, a, an innovation contest. It, may, it was in 2020, I think. And they, they said, uh, I do not want anymore to, have, uh, to use my district eating with waste or wood because of the, um, of the particles what they call the PM 2.5 particles, which are not good for the health. So they launch a contest, on broad contest, about how to decarbonize my city. And it could, the answers were both about how to refurbish, retrofit the, 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 the eating equipment, the central eating equipment of the city. But there was also a proposal around decarbonization of buildings by themselves. And the project who won, was an industrial heat pump that was able to, 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 to use the water close by because uh, um, Helsinki is close to water. So they, they, they were able to propose an industrial heat pump. And this is a, this is a project which won. And uh, I don't remember the savings that we're expecting from this, but uh, the challenge was to give 1 million euro, just to let you know about the effort for the city to attract investors. So it was a kind of win-win situation um, in that case. The third one I'd like to speak about is are the, the as a service model. What we start to see is uh, both at equipment level and, pro and project level solution, which, which we call as a service. Basically, you have a third party financing which, which takes care of the ownership and financing of the assets. And uh, here I brought you three, I have three pictures. One is, a, a, it's, a, it's an NGO called, um, oh my God, BASE, B-A-S-E, sorry, I think this is in the, uh, at the bottom. Uh, it's a BASE a NGO, which is providing as a service financing for cooling equipments in buildings. It's very interesting, and they, they made many, many demonstration projects in South America and Africa. And it's a very nice, very nice tool. Second is a Q-term at the bottom. They, they, are, they are financing heat pumps, industrial heat pumps, uh, which can be used for, uh, for district heating, for example. Uh, just a comment on the other service models. We start to see other service models for... Um, eating equipments like heat pumps in residential in the UK, which means that some financing uh, organization are starting to see value in, in financing such small projects, which is usually uh, the issue for, for banking to provide these kind of services. And the last one is maybe the, the most interesting for cities, is a, another service model for a, a microgrid or a large, large project uh, here, this is the example of a joint venture that Schneider Electric is having with Carlyle in the US. And we are, we are, we are able to finance a heavy investment in decarbonization. I can take the example of, uh, we have a, a project in uh, Montgomery County in the US, where basically you have a, 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 a bus fleet depot. So you need an, an EV, an, a charging infrastructure plus a battery, plus rooftop. So you have, you have a big microgrid associated with the, with the fleet. And in fact, the fleet is, on, is of course charging there with, with some, some solars, but the fleet is also capable of providing resiliency services to the city if there is a, if there is a blackout. So very interesting project, heavy project, multi-million dollar project, but it's possible to finance this type of project in a, as a service model. And I will stop here. Um, free takeaways quickly. Okay, obviously buildings, it's, it, it's uh, very important. 40% uh, of emission and uh, uh, 
do not forget digital because without digital you cannot measure you cannot control you cannot verify so it's a, it's a, but you have to pro, to 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 take the sea. we speak a lot about energy efficiency and it should be deployed first because it's reducing your bill but then it goes uh, other investment in what we call distributed energy resources to make to, to minimize your carbon footprint but you need a I would say the digital as a glue to, to optimize your system, to maximize your investment, to amplify your investment. And uh, you have to be careful in doing your investments that are, these are really future proof. And this is a journey. You will, not, you will not probably realize all the investment at once, even though you start to see some companies providing massification of works. Um, um, uh, I don't remember the name, there is a famous company in Europe. Um, but uh, and, the, and the final one uh, is basically uh, it's not a problem of technology it's more a problem of uh, putting takes doing the right choice having the right the right pathway of investment with the right business model and benefiting from the policy if we can or if you are a policy maker deploying the right policies to support and I will stop I will stop here thank you okay Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, Mansour, for the presentation. It was extremely comprehensive and uh, insightful. You're right on time, so that's good as well. Uh, so perhaps while we wait for the participants to post some questions in the chat, I I did have a question. You'd mentioned uh, as an additional measure that you took uh, at the Hive in face of the uh, the energy crisis, this concept of sufficiency and how you got the... yes. Uh, people in the building to modify their behavior. Could you perhaps talk a bit about what sort of communication methods or campaigns you use? Because these are things that can be implemented fairly soon, right? You, the invest and there's no real investment to worry about. Uh, so, yes, sure. It's a, it, these are basics. You know, it's a, it's a. I mean, we did we did it in all our sites, by the way, not only uh, tertiary site but also industrial sites. Uh, and, and that's funny because sometimes in, in, in some uh, industrial sites, they were having a, a large door open to the outside. They just put some, some type of uh, transparent blankets and it, it did work. So it's very, uh, it's very, uh, very local, very practical, in, involving people, making them understand what does that mean. Uh, it's about switching off light in building, you know, all these type of things. Uh, it can be about, we, for example, we have one, one system at, uh, at intensity. Uh, we do it automatically now. We switch all the plugs. We switch, all, we switch off all plugs at night. Which, which, because we have many uh, de devices which remain uh, on standby mode. And we, we have this type of system. From, uh, and then, yeah, and we, we, from a communication standpoint, we, on our sites, we have a TV screens, we can, uh, we, we can deploy, we can deploy easily messages um, and, and give, uh, give examples to people to make them understand. So very practical, very practical. Great, thanks. Uh, I see we have a question from Deborah in the chat about the kind of workforce preparation that's needed to take such examples to scale. So I assume what sort of skills and training would be required? Yes, the supply chain, the supply chain is upstream and downstream. So this is the question of downstream supply chain. Today, uh, okay, if I speak about heat pump in the UK, I think we have 20, I mean, let's say, let's say 50, between 15 and 20,000 uh, of uh, gas boiler installer. And we have a few hundred heat pump installers, so we are we absolutely we absolutely need policies that support the the skilling the, the reskilling or upskilling of existing installers or you know create a, a new I mean new education path for people to 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 do that and it it is it is as important as the upstream of having the number of uh, it pumps to deploy, you know. Uh, so it's really a concern and it should not be uh, uh, underestimated. The effort is massive. And the second point I would like to bring to, with respect to the downstream value chain is that we need to have a quality deployment. 
what we have seen at the start of the solar in the solar deployment in rooftop, what we have seen at the beginning of EV development deployment, EV smart char uh, charger charger development, we saw that there were many issues in the way people were installing. So what needs to be deployed at the same time of uh, reskilling up, skilling our, our certification schemes? Uh, I take an example in France. We did uh, I mean, the government created a, 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 a label, a certification uh, of uh, which called it was called IRVE, and it was these were certified installer for charging charging station. And I think we need to do the same for heat pumps for all the all these assets. You know, it's very important. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That's a very valid point because as you, I mean, in all around the world, you see the deployment is outpacing what yeah. uh, countries can keep up with. So it's often a risk sometimes even for the adoption of the technology that there's safety issues and so on. But yeah, you're very right. Um, please post your questions in the chat. Uh, but if you're feeling hesitant, I have perhaps another question for myself, which is... Um, could you uh, speak a bit more about what you mentioned, the efficiency as a service concept? And are there any sort of innovative business models that you've encountered? And perhaps what sort of policies uh, would be needed to enable these? On the energy itself, energy efficiency itself, I've not seen new things, I would say, lately. Uh, but the question is, if you look at what, what is behind energy efficiency in the definition of the IEA, you can put electrification. So uh, deployment of electrified heat, deployment of electrified vehicle, uh, you get this as a service model. Uh, I mentioned one company, Qtherm, which is deploying uh, this type of solutions. It's getting, I would say, it's getting a product now. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not. These are not pilots. These are real project, and the pipe is increasing for, for industrial heat pumps. In a, it's not in buildings, but uh, it, it it's really increasing. For other service models, for residential, um, I know that in the UK they, they are testing a number of models. Not only you know there are between the the leasing the other the other service models. There are different variations around that. Um, but but we are still in a kind of market experimentation phase. It's still, still really, really not uh, mainstream. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, perhaps since we're reaching near the closing time, one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you are there any energy efficiency related gaps? Do you think that cannot be addressed by current technology, um, or do you see like a a big leap possible in the future since we're always keeping an eye to the future. No, maybe I will speak about a, a trendy world, uh, which is AI. <laughs> uh, we speak a lot. Uh, we speak a lot about AI. Uh, uh, in fact, we f from from energy uh, from uh, energy man from energy management systems perspective. We are really, really uh, doing a lot, you know, in the, basically we are measuring, uh, we, I'm talking about BMS. I'm going to take an example of a BMS or home control system. Um, we are already uh, taking a lot of data, uh, doing some optimization. We are not using it, we are not using it. Uh, we didn't use the word AI until recently, but in fact, in some cases, this is optimization control strategies, which are not far from AI. And uh, it's quite it's quite efficient. What we showed that uh, if you take a BMS and if you put an, a an IoT layers with many sensors in a in a building, uh, we we made it on, on a real buildings in in Grenoble. Uh, we deployed a BMS. We had basically thirty percent energy efficiency. We deployed the IoT layers, meaning putting many sensors and having a control strategy much more granular. We added fifteen percent energy efficiency. And this 15% energy efficiency layer uh, was made with sensors and so on. Okay, and this this uh, what is interesting is that this layer you may say okay this is digital it consumes energy and so on and so on. But the the return on carbon of this hardware which were deployed 
with embodied emission versus the savings in CO2 the, from the 15 percent you are doing, the, the IoT layer was carbon positive in, in less than two years. Very interesting. So AI, adding AI, uh, you have several companies doing AI uh, uh, on top of BMS, for example, Schneider is doing it. So you will, depending on, so basically your AI is learning Okay, you're learning the weather, you're learning the patterns of the of the building, what are the usage of the building. So you will, I would say, probably add a third layer of energy efficiency. I would say, uh, I don't know, five, ten percent, maybe. Uh, it really depends on the pattern. If you, for example, if you are in a building and that your pattern is really quite all the same all the year, or I mean, from year to year, you can probably have really uh, something to find. If it's a, uh, let's say. Uh, if it's a mall, I would think I would think it's probably more difficult. If it's an office building where you where you see people moving to go to the restaurant, at, you know you have kind of standard pattern. You can probably better better optimize and find and find ways of of savings. Great, thanks. Uh, yeah, lots of interesting things to look forward to in the future, but uh, we shouldn't lose uh, sight of the fact that there's a lot we can do today, both on the technology yes. policy side and so on. So perhaps we bring the Q&A session to an end. Um, if you don't mind, thanks so much, Mansoor, for your, you. your presentation you and your time. We have a few more uh, slides. Please keep an eye out for the next energy exchange, the last one of season one, which will take place on the 7th of November on innovative finance mechanisms. So perhaps what Mansoor was saying about investments and acting, this could give you a, a better overview of that. Um, if your city or regional government interested in working with us, please uh, get in touch at sustainable.energy at ikle.org. We are happy to, to help you in any way we can. And uh, once again, we'd like to thank our partners. So we have the Urban Transitions Mission, uh, and we also have a number of partners, including Schneider Electric for season one. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your hour. Thank you especially to myself for your time and your, your efforts for putting this together. And uh, we hope everyone has learned things, enjoyed themselves, and we will see you for the next one on 7 November. So thank you.